So now in this video we're going to come back to uh, the basic setup of the uh, last video and the video before it when it comes to the LEDs. So we have these uh, super capacitors right here. So these are uh, special types of uh, super capacitors. They don't behave like most super capacitors and uh, they do store a lot of charge uh, relatively speaking and uh, can provide it to a load when needed. But they have internal resistance so I can do uh, some stuff with it that I couldn't do with a regular uh, super capacitor. So one of them is a uh, short circuit them if they are uh, fully charged. So they're probably fully discharged right now. I don't have the power supply connected to the board and I have uh, that jumper. We got these two jumpers so if you power one rail then it powers the other. It doesn't do that automatically in case you're too new to electronics and didn't know that. So if you just power that positive rail you're going to need something to jump across to also power that rail at the same time. So in any case, we discharged them right there. I have current limited to the power supply to 100 milliamps because with uh, these loads, that's uh, if we went up to 12 volts, that's going to be uh, somewhat close to uh, what we're going to need. Actually, it was like half of that, but uh, that was kind of an estimate I uh, quickly made. We have four LEDs here that are parallel. So lighting one does not affect the others as long as the power supply can provide enough current each one of them might take about 20 milliamps you don't want to exceed that for a total of 80 and then maybe you will need 20 milliamps here there in series they share that uh, current right there so it won't go above uh, 20 milliamps for the four of them for a total of 100 but now we're going to charge the uh, super capacitors right there so this likes to think that there's a short circuit and actually I made uh, this mistake the last time I tried filming this scene with the jumper there we do have a short circuit so I'm gonna remove that now we're gonna come down and uh, hopefully it starts powering it nope it saw it as a short circuit so it turned it off maybe if I press the button it won't and uh, we got that problem so sometimes it'll start uh, charging but it'll limit current to that hundred milliamps it actually outputs a lower voltage and uh, to do that so let's go to uh, Let's go right, let's go way up. Let's see how much current it actually demands. So, it's only five volts, only I think like 15 milliamps or something will be needed by the LEDs. We could remove them, but I'm gonna leave them in there now. So we turn the power on. So we needed uh, one amp of current total uh, to start charging the super capacitors and also provide uh, probably the full power for the LEDs right there at uh, 5 volts. So if we were using 12 volts that would damage the uh, super capacitors. We won't want to do that but uh, we need more than 6 volts to get uh, those LEDs to light up. But there you can see as the super capacitors charge current is uh, going down. So they have some resistance other super capacitors would uh, take all the current that the power supply can provide to uh, raise their voltages which could cause damage if that's too much current for part of the uh, circuit right there. So when we put uh, 5 volts across uh, the two capacitors there, we needed about 1 amp of current. So each one of them probably would have accepted about uh, 500 milliamps of current, which tells me that uh, they probably have a resistance of uh, somewhere around... I think that would be about uh, 10 ohms of resistance. So now I let some time pass and we're down to about 60 milliamps right there and I'm going to remove both of the uh, super capacitors. If time kept going we would uh, at some point get down to uh, 10 milliamps once the super capacitors got fully charged and uh, so these are polarized, you gotta put them the right way. That plus needs to be more positive. The minus down there needs to be more negative. And uh, so uh, at some point, these would become fully charged and we would have uh, about 10 milliamps of current going through there. And if we lose power for whatever reason, there you can see that the super capacitors can uh, keep powering the load. So they have uh, low enough internal resistance where you could even short them, they won't instantly uh, discharge, but uh, it's really not uh, low enough resistance to get the uh, loads to uh, to get dimmer in this case, to really lose power. The uh, thing is though, if they are fully discharged and you try to provide power to a circuit, 
you need the power supply to be able to provide a lot of current. So if you limit that to what the load needs, the load's not going to have enough power for a while. So in any case, I'm not going to drag on this video. Thought I would show that again. Again, these are uh, not uh, really uh, super capacitors that uh, you'll probably find a lot of use for. Maybe you will. Then, of course, buy them. And uh, if they still look fun, anyways, uh, buy them. But if you're on a budget and you only want to buy what you need, uh, if you think you'll need super capacitors, these are probably not the kind that you'll need. So just be aware of that. But uh, they're still fun, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you check out one of the other videos that I post on the screen. And check out the links below. I'm going to lower the uh, maximum current on here. So I don't fry a, a future circuit in case uh, I forget I raised the value. So see you in the next video.